Hello, and welcome back to Irrotational Flow. And today we're going to talk about the Vortex Sheet. So let's get right to it. So the objectives of today's talk is to develop, is to develop the inviscid flow solution for um, a row of vortices placed along the x-axis. And uh, what we'd like to do is to manipulate this such that we can calculate the, the u and the v velocity, mainly the x component and the y component of the scalar, uh, the, component, the scalar components of velocity, and then calculate the circulation that this uh, infinitely long sheet of line vortices generates. Okay, so let's get started. This is a kind of an image of the flow field. You're looking kind of on edge, and there's all of these vortices, these line vortices. They have strength k rotating in the counterclockwise direction, and they're separated by a distance of a. They are fixed to the, to the x-axis, and they are aligned to the z-axis. So an individual vortex, the strength of an individual vortex is k times natural log of r, or the the uh, radial location of, of that vortex. And so to have an infinite sheet of them means you're just going to sum this over uh, r, which is the uh, each location of the vortex, the origin of the vortex. And they all have the same amplitude k, and that amplitude k is constant. Now, it's quite a trick to go from this uh, description of, of psi to this description of psi. So I'll leave it to you to give that a try. It's non-trivial. Um, you can find uh, the solution to that in a book by Kuthi and Chow, which we have in the library. It's a pretty well-known aerodynamics book. So um, you should be able to find it in there. It's not in, in the textbook we're using for the class. All right. So this is a little friendlier in the sense that it uh, it's, doesn't contain this sum, this infinite sum, which is nice. And uh, it's, it's in xy coordinates, and it's kind of sines and cosines and such. So that's a, that's a friendlier version of, of, uh, of the original string function. So if you were to just go and plot this in MATLAB or Maple, it would generate this really neat looking solution. Um, what you see here is what's known as the cat eye solution. It's a series of vortices that create swirl, and I've uh, labeled this with some arrows so you can see the direction. Remember, this is counterclockwise, so each one of these inside here is uh, swirling in that direction. And then um, you can see that they intersect at these saddle points. So there's a saddle point here, and there's a saddle point here, and a saddle point here, and so forth. So that's where two uh, streamlines come together and meet, and then they, they uh, emit from that same saddle point. Mm, what else? I've, the, the flow above this sheet of vortices uh, is to the left, and the flow below is to the right. So the vortices themselves induce this flow to the left and right, which is really kind of like a shear layer, right? Um, I've labeled the, vort the, the streamlines here, as you can see. So. Uh, uh, you, can, you can plot this yourself. And then also, as y goes to infinity, as we get far, far away from the sheet, the streamlines become almost parallel. We'll see that they do become parallel uh, far, far away from the sheet. All right, so this is known as the cat eye solution. The vortices form a shear layer, as I mentioned, on top and on bottom with these rollers, kind of like in the middle. And uh, above and below this cat eye, there's an induced flow that we're going to call u and minus u, meaning the, just the x component of the velocity. All right, so we can calculate the x component of the velocity in the normal way. Uh, since we're in Cartesian coordinates, we can just take the derivative with respect to y of the stream function psi. And uh, this is easy enough to do. You can do this in, in uh, in maple, if you would like. And so we end up with this hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine minus cosine. And then uh, we can look in the far field. So 
as y goes to infinity, what is the locally induced velocity out there in the far field? So what I'll do is I will uh, let y go to infinity and take the limit of this as y goes to infinity. Well, if you recall your basic trig functions, we've got a bit of a problem because hyperbolic sine, as y goes to infinity, it shoots off to infinity, right? In the positive direction, and it shoots off to, to negative infinity in the negative infinite direction. So that's a problem. Uh, hyperbolic cosine does pretty much the same thing. It also asymptotes to infinity in the plus direction and in the minus direction it asymptotes to negative infinity. So the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator of this function um, are going to infinity. So we'll use L'Hopital's rule and see if we can't uh, fix this. So I apply L'Hopital's rule, I take the derivative uh, with respect to the variable that uh, is uh, causing this thing to go to infinity, and that's y. So I take the derivative with respect to y, and then uh, I have that written here. And then I can take the limit as y goes to infinity, and I get this very simplified function, pi k over a over the hyperbolic tangent of 2 pi y over a. All right, so... Uh, Fortunately for us, hyperbolic tangent is well behaved in its asymptotic limits. So as hyperbolic tangent goes to infinity, it converges to 1, and likewise at negative infinity, it converges to minus 1. So the velocity far, far away, the y and velocity, or the, yeah, the x velocity induced uh, is pi k over a. So that makes sense. It's the ratio of the strength of the vortex to the spacing of the vortex. And uh, it's plus and minus because on the top, the shear layer is moving towards the left or in the negative x direction, and on the bottom, it's moving in the positive x direction. All right, so that is the, the x direction velocity. Let's calculate the scalar component of the y velocity. So uh, again, we are just going to take the derivative with respect to x of psi, the stream function, and I just rewrote it here so you can see it. And uh, when I do that, I get this sine over hyperbolic sine minus cosine function. And uh, we take the limit as uh, x goes to infinity. And if you recall, uh, the limit here simply oscillates sines and cosines, and hyperbolic sine does, uh, does uh, shoot off to infinity, so um, it's going to be something greater than 1. So we got something that looks like this. Uh, you got 0 on top and something uh, large on the bottom, so uh, these two working together mean that the velocity in the far field in the y direction is zero. So indeed, the vortex sheet induces a shear flow, right? In the far field, if we were to zoom way out so that we couldn't see the cat eyes, they just, I just put them here just so that you remember that they're there, these vortices would really disappear. This is in the limit uh, as y gets much, much bigger than a, the spacing, right? So as we zoom out, it becomes kind of like, uh, uh, kind of like a small quantity a with respect to y. The flow that's induced is uh, just a parallel flow, uh, u in the x direction and v is equal to zero in the y direction. So given that this, given this flow field, what we'll call the vortex sheet in the far field, let's, uh, let's calculate the circulation. So to do that, we're going to pick a closed contour, and I'm going to pick a contour that surrounds one of the vortices. Uh, it's going to be a square, so it'll be easy to, to do the line integral around that vortex. And uh, it will have a size in the x direction, that's, that's a, and uh, a size in the y direction, that's a, and it'll be spaced such that uh, the, uh, 
the spacing between each vortex contains one control volume. All right, so we enclose the vortex, and if you remember from last time, if you enclose the vortex, uh, you would expect that the vorticity, or sorry, the circulation would be 2 pi k, right, for the irrotational vortex. But we're talking about an infinite series of vortices, so maybe it'll be modified just a bit, but something like that's what we're expecting. We're, we shouldn't get zero, right, because... Um, as we saw last time, enclosing that uh, singularity should result in a non-zero circulation. The sign convention uh, is going to be counterclockwise, so I'm going to go around this, uh, this guy in the counterclockwise direction, and the contour integral path is also counterclockwise. Uh, oh, the, the, the second bullet here refers to the, the uh, the vortex strength was swirling in the counterclockwise direction. And then I'm going to go around the contour in the counterclockwise direction. All right, so here's our definition of circulation as a line integral, v dot ds, the integral thereof, equals capital gamma. So just like before, uh, I just wrote the, 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 the components of the velocity here along the, uh, along the uh, contour that I've selected just so that you can recognize them and then we'll just simply sum along the line. So just like before I'm going to start at the bottom and sum along this this portion which is u1 dotted with dx and then I'm going to move up the side v2 here dotted with positive dy in the j direction and then u2 moving this way now notice U2 is negative, but I'm not going to include the negative sign here because that negative sign is inside of the scalar component U2. So it's just going to be U2i dotted with minus dxi. Uh, so that, that, line, uh, that, that line element is in the negative x direction. And then finally, I'll come down and uh, complete the loop with this V1j dotted with minus dyj. So that's my counterclockwise uh, line integral path. And so that simplifies just to the difference y1 minus y2 dx plus v2 minus v1 dy. And we've already solved for the uh, u and v components. And so this simplifies a bit more. So the circulation just reduces down to uh, this 2k pi over a dx. All right. Another way to write this would be, say, the integral of gamma of x dx, and where uh, gamma of x is equal to u1 minus u2. Now, uh, we're really going to use that next time when we derive the finite length vortex sheet. But this time, I thought I would just show you how those two are connected. All right, so let's summarize the vortex sheet. We started with the near field view. Uh, of a infinite number of vortices uh, along the y equals zero plane extending in the z direction such that the right hand rule uh, positive rotation is counterclockwise. Uh, the, the view of that is this really cool looking uh, uh, roll, set of rollers or vortices where the flow uh, uh, passes over the top of each one of them. Uh, on the top and along the bottom. And in the far field, the streamlines become flat, so you get parallel flow there. And we have our stream function. And then in the far field, when we zoom way out, uh, asymptotically, the streamlines become flat, and we end up with a shear flow uh, moving to the left above the x, uh, in the y positive direction, and moving to the right in the negative y direction. We have a definition of what the circulation is. Uh, we define gamma, which is really the strength of this vortex sheet, 2k pi over a. And then, uh, again, to kind of set the stage for the finite length vortex sheet, what we're going to do is we can calculate the lift of this uh, vortex sheet by determining what gamma is. and uh, calculating the lift for a finite sheet. 
and we'll do that in the next lecture. Um, I think before we leave this lecture, it's fun to look at some of the flow fields that arrive out of this vortex sheet. And in fluid mechanics, there is a, a really famous stability problem, and we'll do stability later on in this course, called the Kelvin-Helmholtz instability problem. And what you do is you start with this vortex sheet, and then it evolves and it breaks up. So the evolution and the ultimate breakup of the vortex sheet is a step towards turbulence. That's getting way ahead of ourselves here, but uh, it's such a neat flow, I thought I would show it to you. So this vortex sheet, sometimes if you're lucky, you can see them. Um, one place that people take lots of really cool pictures of vortex sheets is in the atmosphere. So what you would have is you would have a uh, kind of a kind of a, a stream of wind moving in one direction or an, a, and another stream moving in the other direction. So these are upper atmosphere sort of uh, uh, jet streams. And then if you're very lucky, you would have a cloud that's existing right near this uh, shear layer, right? So the uh, jet streams create these shear layers. And if there's a cloud there, then sometimes you can see them form. So you get these really cool looking images of, of, uh, of the vortex sheet out there in nature. And the atmosphere is great for, for looking at really large scale flows. Um, so you don't have to be in a wind tunnel to see these. These have been simulated in computer simulations. This one is showing you the breakup and how they, they transition from a small disturbance and the formation of the vortex sheet to ultimately becoming unstable and eventually breaking up. We're getting ahead of ourselves here, but uh, that's one of the applications. And uh, people see these everywhere. This is an image from Jupiter where you can kind of see this vortex sheet uh, resulting from, from uh, the meeting of two shear layers. Um, this is an image that I, uh, a video that I post off of uh, YouTube, and I can't uh, not show you. It's showing two sets, uh, it's showing you some water in different densities. Oh, good. Yeah, it's done. Tube, and you're going to tilt this tube, and you're going to go, oh, so that the denser fluid in the bottom okay. flows down yeah. and forces the lighter fluid on top to wow. fall out. And then you get this cool oh, vortex sheet <laughs> that forms um, right there for an instant. You can see the vortex sheet, and then you can see the growth of the Kelvin-Helmholtz instability, and then eventually it becomes completely turbulent. I wonder if I can play that again. So this is an apparatus that's capped on both ends. It's long, it's a rectangular cross-section, and uh, you need to build it in the tilt it. Start the flow. Wow! <laughs> All right, so that's the vortex sheet and the Kelvin Helmholtz instability. So, to wrap up, uh, the objective was to develop the inviscid flow solution for a plane of vortices called the vortex sheet. Uh, manipulate this to find the stream function and determine the xy velocity components, and then calculate the circulation of the far field flow. Next time, we're going to uh, use a part of this sheet to generate the uh, flow field around a plate, and then ultimately calculate the lift of that plate and the circulation around it. All right, so until next time, we'll see you.